Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live seminar, our 17th one. Really happy to see you guys already waiting in the in the chat. Nice to see you guys here. Happy Friday. Hope everyone is having a good day, um, a good week, um, regardless of what anyone might be going through. Um, again, thank you for being here. Exciting times for us. We're super excited about our announcement today. Public Testnet is going live next week. We have launched our, um, well, listed our sign-up form. So if you want to participate in that, um, please do sign up. You have um, the availability now to go to our development Twitter that we have. Um, Yan is the one running that. He's the one that's been posting the uh, screenshots that when they're ready to be posted, been teasing um, what's to be released. And next week is finally our um, our objective has been met. You know, so we're we're excited about our public test net. Um, I do have a video that hasn't been shared. Um, I did message Yan earlier. Um, but I know that he's super, he's exhausted. Um, it's been a lot of work over the last couple of weeks. So he's taken, taken a breather. He may pop in here and chat, um, uh, but I, I, I don't know. It just depends on his, uh, his schedule right now. I know he's taking a breather right now. So, um, but I do have a video, get back to that point. I have a cool video that I want to show you guys, but I did want to get his, um, his okay on posting that here. Cause like I said, he's, he runs that Twitter. So he might've already had that plan to release it. I don't want to mess that up, um, but it's going to be really cool, guys. Um, I'm I'm blown away by how it's finally come together. Uh, the launching of our update where you can mint your own NFTs. Uh, there's a token layer. You're, it's it's fantastic. So um, everything that we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks has led up to this monumental um, objective for us. Um, many reasons. It's a step for us to finally introduce different use cases that a network as large as PAC protocol can offer, um, not just, you know, completely always relying on one native coin or one specific purpose, but expanding the different use cases that are always going to be available. So um, and there'll be more that get introduced that this technology that we've all been a part of for the past couple of years. If you just pay attention to world events, you start realizing that this is what's going to be needed at one time or another for different reasons. And that's why we feel that we're pioneers in this industry. Um, we're innovating our technology, uh, IPFS and PAC protocol, that marriage alliance, whatever you want to call it, that relationship has proven to be a huge step to help us guide to where we want to go, um, help provide these different, for instance, Yan Safe. Yan DNA, Pack App, you know, we're we're starting to combine all of our different products together because of our um, objectives that have been finally reached and our vision that we brought. So um, I hope that you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any specific questions about what this test net is, um, what we can expect, uh, please post them here. Um, but I'm going to initially just read off um, like a, I guess like a, uh, I guess I hit a, a, um, a tab list or a check mark or what's the word? I'm trying to think of a word. Uh, bullet points. There you go. Bullet points. I'm going to read some bullet points that Yan set out, um, kind of just talking about what you guys can all expect in this. So, again, it's not just um, a test net for a pack protocol, but that also required Yan Safe to have a major upgrade, uh, meaning um, not necessarily upgrade, but update, uh, meaning the entry of yan the entry of tokens the ability to see see what's posted the you know the information the metadata how to do it and not just making it possible but making it easy to do um, that's something that we've always talked about when we released yan safe originally um, under um, uh, under our previous name we focused on making it easy you know we may, we focused on making it to where people who want to deploy a master node or even just educate themselves with how to run a full node and they use pack as their as their network of choice it's super easy to do a couple of clicks but there's also availability to do it the manual way so we kind of took that into objective here with the safe as well that we want people to be able to have access to an nft supportive network um, different token layers the different you know uh, use cases that are brought to us because of ipfs storing your data etc we all want that to be possible, but not only possible, but easy and simple and user friendly, but also give it, you know, the um, the advanced layer, as you've probably seen in our screenshots on our uh, development Twitter, that there is advanced or expert um, settings. So that's where you'll be able to go in there and 
directly put the uh, extra data that you may want to put to um, um, uh, fill the data points for your NFT or for your token, whatever it is. So I'm going to go through and go through these bullet points now. And uh, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, just post them in the chat and I'll read them after I'm done with this. So minting NFTs and tokens directly into the PAC pro protocol blockchain, sending your NFTs or tokens within the PAC pro protocol blockchain. Um, and a, an important note on this, obviously tokens, NFTs, PAC also, native, native coin obviously is still always included in the wallet. What's important to note is that with all tracks, transactions, NFTs, tokens, or PAC, PAC is the fee. So an equivalent to, you know, what is the gas fee or whatever, it's PAC. So if in, in the event that different tokens are created, including YAN token, to send YAN to another address, PAC is the transaction fee. And that would be the same case for um, any other tokens that are brought to this chain in the future. Um, maybe not just from us, but from anyone that wants to build their own project and build it on PAC protocol, the fee to transact those tokens as well are PAC. So it's important note there. It, within Yen Safe, I kind of just touched on this, but I'll re, re say it. There's three ways that you'll be able to mint your NFTs. Uh, the simple way is you just click mint NFT with the least inputs required. Um, the advanced way would be to mint the NFT with most details acquired with the most de details input. And then the expert one is to inject extra data entries for developers. So there's many ways that you're able to, you know, specifically put what data you want to, um, I guess, um, describe your NFT uh, or to describe what you're, you know, stamping on the blockchain. Um, but there's also the simple way for those that just want to get something up there as an NFT, it's, I thought that was a pretty important part there. So important note there as well. Um, the IPFS hash, okay, important here as well. The IPFS hash is indirectly stored in blockchain in form of checksum, which can be converted into an IPFS hash. So there will be a documentation that comes with this that we've been preparing. I know there will be questions on how the information is stored in the blockchain, what is what. It's a lot easier for us to, to uh, release the documentation, which we will with this. And then, you know, we can go over that together on another live event and or, you know, we can just post those questions in our uh, frequently asked questions on our website. So um, just keep that in mind. The metadata. So the metadata are hosted at YAN Network, which is the IPFS network that is supporting YAN DNA, which is just treated over different master nodes owned by right now only PAC Global Holdings um, uh, members and different owners uh, individually, but connected to the, uh, providing the network structure needed for the IPFS network to work and for YAN DNA to be operational. Um, that's how we're able to give you guys that five free gigabytes of uh, storage for the beta. Um, those are coming from servers that we are supporting. So that's where uh, the metadata is being hosted. Again, eventually we're able to release the public you know, version of the IPFS node where the community can also add nodes. It won't just be, be it won't just be um, our nodes that are, or our, our uh, servers that are supporting the network. So that's also important. It's just steps, you know, from launch to production launch, and then make sure everything's going good. And then we'll have that um, community friendly, I guess, version of being able to install IPFS and contribute your own resources to the network as well, if you choose to. Um, not something that's uh, demanded or expected, but it's something that everyone can participate in on their own if they choose to. It's all choice based. The mutable, immutable custom data is supported. For example, level system of this NFT or game itself, which requires custom data. So then in the game, it can read what kind of metadata this item has. So, you know, if you can kind of think about where we're going with our direction, not just you know, specifically towards one industry like gaming, but we're just making these things possible so that it doesn't need to be added later. Um, there's multiple use cases for an NFT besides just put, putting a picture, you know, the metadata is very important. There's a preview option within Yen Safe, um, of course, so that you can um, preview either in PNG, JPEG, um, or WebP. Bonus WebP supports animated images too, um, which is cool, kind of like think of, you know, think of like GIF, you know, an animated image, something like that. So the, I'm just telling you all the different 
preview options that you'll be able to see of different NFTs that you mint. Because again, an NFT is not always or doesn't always just have to be a still frame picture. Um, it can be a video, it could be a piece of paper, you know, a document, it could be a commercial, you know, it, whatever. So there's different uh, formats that are supported within Yan Safe. It is an important note that Yan Safe will not be able to like play songs, like audio, like or render things like 3D objects, like or you know, be able to play all medias and files. Like that's not the point of the wallet um, itself. That is the point of Yan DNA. That is why that's tied together. So you'll, as we go along this launch and this progress keeps going, you'll see how Yan Safe is the place where you can mint your NFTs, you can you know manage your collections, whatever, um, blah blah blah. Um, or uh, Yan DNA later, you can store your NFTs that you minted on the chain as well into your Yan DNA account for extra safekeeping. So that's why you know we. It's, it's a step progress. And I hope I'm explaining that a lot, but I know it's a lot of info. And again, there will be documentation. So um, just bear with me on that. <clears throat> another another note, uh, kind of uh, something that Yan introduced to me is that expiration date included for um, the NFTs that you could basically do it in a subscription mode, kind of like, um, for example, um, like software license expiration, subscription-based NFTs, um, that's different data that you could literally put inside the metadata. So for example, you can have an NFT that has, um, you know, I want to rent something for a year and the NFT has the expiration date and you have that. Um, and that's, that's what gives you like that honoring that one year contract when that date is expired. Um, because that date is put inside the metadata, it's verifiable. You can see that that is exactly what it should have been. Once it's expired, your NFT doesn't expire. Um, it doesn't just delete off the chain, but obviously that date is no longer recognized, kind of like at the bottom of your coupon or a bottom of, uh, you know, anything. Uh, there's always an expiration date. So kind of that's the system that we're uh, working with there. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. So a lot of different ways that, you know, we've talked about a lot of different ways NFTs can be used. And that's why we try to build this at the first release of it um, with as many different possible ways to use NFTs um, and make it easy so that maybe the educating part of it is self-learned and that's, you know, always the best way to learn something. So I think, I think that's the last of my bullet points here. Let's see here. Oh, one more. Yansafe allows you to enter custom data, but has no use inside of Yansafe, like inside the actual client. It's rather for third-party services, um, which, you know, that's, that's for other developers to be able to plug and play stuff with the data that they want to input. Okay, so that's what I got. That's what I got. A lot of info there, but um, this is a very cool update to be part of. Again, if you want to be part of the public test net that's launching next week, um, please sign up through the form that we posted. Um, anyone's Anyone that wants to participate, sign up. You'll be able to participate. And an uh, important disclaimer too, um, just I want to be clear, we're signing up for a test net. So if you do sign up and you're participating, please realize that this is not, you know, it's not a real, it's not a real currency. It's not tied to any that. It's a test net. It's a test net on a not, not a uh, public mainnet uh, operation yet. So please don't be confused by that. And if you feel that you will, um, maybe just wait for the original, um, the, uh, the main release, the official main release. Um, I don't think we, thank you for your question, by the way. Um, just be real. Um, how many testnet users are you aiming for? We don't. I don't think we have like a definitive number. Just opening it up, letting people join. Um, we're probably going to run like a PR with it as well. I don't know if that's the right word, PR, but like some sort of announcement, get it on some sites and stuff, so that other people, not just in the pack community, if they get interested in the fact that oh wow, that's it's a new uh, you know new protocol that is capable of minting NFTs. I want to participate in their testnet. Maybe we'll get some people in there and they want to um, open to anyone and um, I mean, if it goes crazy and there's way too many people, then, you know, maybe, maybe we need to upgrade our, our test net if it gets overrun, but I, I think we're fine there. I mean, more testers, the better. I mean, if something breaks because of more testers, that's really good to know. <laughs> How long will we be able to use the test net? Um, I was talking about that with Yan today because I didn't, 
I wanted to like get uh, give like a reasonable expectation of like, oh, this is how long it's going to be. But th the reason why we're in public testnet right now is because if you've paid attention in our last seminars or just in our info of what we've been saying, um, we've been in testnet this entire time, um, just internally. So we've been able to, you know, make sure things are working. We're only bringing it public now because we feel that it is like it's it's good to go. So you guys are the extra eyes that. If, if everything's going great and nothing gets reported as like a major bug, then testnet could be super fast. Um, it could take a little bit longer too if something crazy does get reported. But again, we've been in testnet for a couple of weeks now, fixing the things that we have found. And we've come to this point where we feel we're good to go. So um, no like actual time limit on the testnet, but could be super fast. Should be, should be super fast, you know, but again, want to give people enough time as well that even if something doesn't go wrong and it is working, just it's a big change to our network, meaning it's a token layer. You can now mint NFTs. This is brand new to this network. Um, it's really brand new to any type of network like ours. Um, it, I, I'm not aware of anything co compared to this. So um, at least give enough time for our current community and users to be you know, situated and educated with how and what to expect and you know, how to use it. And then as well, you have to remember, we also have other products like the pack app <clears throat> updates planned for that, which also need to include a YAN token. So maybe we need to wait for that or we decide to wait until pack app is done and the updates are done to push mainnet or perhaps not, um, you know, because maybe pack app just won't be able to support the token layer, but you'll be able to obviously still use it for pack if we push the mainnet. So um, and that's, of course, until the UI changes for the uh, pack app are completed. And after that, um, you know, list doesn't stop. We keep working. We got so many things to go. We have Yan DNA. You know, we know that's still in beta. Uh, we understand this is why this token layer was so important, getting this file uh, fine tuned and ready to go. Um, so when this is done, testnet's good to go. Communities tested it as well and gives their good, you know, good to go. Yan DNA is going to be one of the next focus, one of the the major focus. Um, so that people can start using that as a third party service to their YAN safe NFTs or to other NFTs or to any data that you want to use it for. It's file storage um, in uh, decentralized file storage. And then again, with the release of the uh, public version of the IPFS node, that would just become even more so. Um, so you'll be able to do that. Uh, you'll be able to secure your in, secure your data storage with the means of YAN token by depositing YAN. Um, you'll also be able to um, purchase uh, uh, storage using pack or acquire, I should say. Um, and you should and you'll be able to also use a credit card. Um, we have not uh, specifically picked out the provider. Be using a third party provider to where you'll be able to, um, you know, secure some data storage space on um, our YAN DNA YAN network um, using your credit card if you don't want to use YAN or you don't want to use pack. Um, there's different reasons for why different options are available. First and foremost, um, user friendly if you don't or you're not aware of crypto and just general, generally speaking, just reaching out to majority of the users in the world. Um, a lot of people have credit debit cards and if they want to have storage, why should they be left out if they don't have crypto? So that's a reason for that. Um, Yan, that's obviously the most beneficial method of acquiring storage space on Yan DNA um, because A, um, you never you're never spending it, you deposit it, it's collateral. So it gets put into your account um, for the rate that the plan for storage goes. So for argument's sake, five gigabytes of storage, you can deposit your yen and you'll receive that five gigab gigabytes of storage throughout the week. Uh, meaning, the reason why I say throughout the week is because price changes change throughout every second of the day, you know, markets, whatever, no one can control it. So every week, um, unless we change that, but just giving you the current idea, Every week there'll be an API that checks the current price of yen on the markets that it's listed on and adjusts the storage plans accordingly. Now, if you've already acquired one of those storage plans, let's say for argument's sake, it was 100 yen for the price, for, it was 100 yen for five gigabyte storage plan. For argument's sake, let's use that. If at the end of that week, that yen is now worth more than that five gigabytes, like the value of yen went up, then you can claim that additional storage you know for you just re, you just claim it you basically redeposit it or tell tell your account that you're going to collateral still the value of what what's there um, or 
you'll be able to take out your YAN of whatever that you don't need anymore because you only needed five gigabytes. You don't need the extra space and just leave that in collateral. So there's obviously benefits. Um, again, the number one is that you're never actually spending anything. You're just using it as collateral. Um, and number two, you get to, so to speak, ride the waves of any price action that were to occur and potentially acquire more storage space for yourself. Um, that's kind of the point of letting people realize like your data has value. And if you tie a value to it, then you'll recognize it. And so, you know, storage space matters. Um, it's really cool that if you gain storage space, you can lock it in more and it's lifetime. You know, it's, it's as long as the network exists, you are going to have the storage that you have already um, gained. It's never going to go backwards, meaning like if the yen price were to go in the negative direction from where you originally, you know, got your five gigabyte storage plan, this yen DNA is not going to be a product that takes your storage away from you. Uh, so that's also good to know. And then the pack feature as well. Um, we, we figured that if, you, you know, obviously pack protocol is the network that is supporting the system. Uh, supporting the IPFS network, et cetera. So we will also do something to where you can acquire storage space by um, using PAC. And uh, that obviously will have different, um, it won't have all the benefits of YAN, meaning like the fluctuations of price. It'll be very similar to as if you acquired it with cre uh, credit card or debit card. Um, one time, you know, purchase, you have that storage. It's not going to go anywhere, but it's not going to go up. It's not going to go down. And you, um, you know, to get more, you have to put more PAC in and it wouldn't be withdrawable. So those are the three different methods, different perks, different benefits. But again, when we get to that um, point, you'll be able to uh, choose, choose your option of how you want to use it. But super excited for that. Um, let's see here. No, I'm sorry. I don't have any updates on the uh, Flare partnership. Um, I know that they still have their own stuff being sorted out. So until that is uh, good to go, then we'll, you know, Maybe we'll get some more updates for you guys, but we have a lot that we're currently dealing with right now. So um, not on the back you know, burner, but just not on our priority right now is making sure that all this stuff is going to according to plan for PAC protocol. Yes. Um, will we be able to run a master node on the PAC app in the future? Yes, you will. Um, that is something that Yan is specifically myself as well. Um, we, we agree on a lot of different features that we want on that thing, um, including multi-currency support, meaning Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. Um, and then also, uh, like you mentioned, being able to run a master node on your pack app. Because if you think about it, um, even within Yan Safe, it's the same thing. Yan Safe, you know, if you can connect your master node to a third party server like Vulture or Hetzner, you can close Yan Safe, turn your computer off, and your, your master node's perfectly fine because the server is what's running. Same thing with pack app. And it should be, you know, should be possible. I mean, it is possible. Um, it should be in there. It's just one of those things of us figuring it out and how to do it. And it seems like we have. So, um, that's one of the features that can be expected. I don't have a timeline for that, but it's in the works, you know. If we did updates, you know, based off of every little thing that we want to do, like we would have an update every single month almost. Uh, we would actually. And that would be really annoying, I think, for users. For instance, like if we wanted to say, okay, multi-currency support, we could easily just do that. Just put in, you know, Bitcoin and that's it. All you did was that. It has nothing to do with the network though, you know, so... We want to make sure that if we're going to add cool features, it needs to be an important update for the network because it's going to be really annoying for network users or just regular pack users to constantly have to update their app or basically force them to auto update. And it's just it's just silly, in my opinion, to do that. Like I like to get a lot of things in one update, big update and then push it, you know, so that's why it does take time in between certain things that we do. But it's just because we want to do it right and we want to do it our way. And I mean, I, I, I just, I feel that we have the right for that. Yes, you, um, for master node owners, will we have to update our YAN safe? Yes, absolutely, but not right now. Um, that's not, we're, we're not there yet. We are at testnet. That is only going to be for those that sign up via the uh, form that we pushed out today. So that is going to be a completely separate, you know, it's a completely separate network. It's not going to connect to the current network. And that is not an update for the main net yet. We're just currently in testnet. So no need to worry about updating your YAN safe wallet at this moment. Yeah, I, I do want to show you guys this video. It's really cool. Um, just to show you guys, like, this is the actual wallet with actual, you know, data that's in there, um, which, like, actual NFTs that were minted on this net, the actual token names, you know, the filters, your collections, et cetera. Um, 
I just don't want to overstep because it's a really cool video. I'll let Yan post that. That's all. Not teasing for no reason, I promise. I just, I don't want to overstep. I like giving people the credit for what they do. You know, it's a great, beautiful UI. Same thing with Yan Safe um, prior, same thing with Pack App, all of them. And so we want to just release them as best as we can and give credit where it's due. Yes, yes, absolutely feasible. End of quarter one is end of this month. So, um, you know, we're in the, what is it, March 4th? Well, I'll just tell you this, but like, don't hold me to dates. Like our plan is Monday, okay? Our plan is Monday to release this, all right? So we want to release this Monday, which is the 7th. Now, bearing, maybe it doesn't get, like some UI things are not done yet and we can't do it Monday, it's Tuesday, then it's Tuesday, or maybe it's Wednesday. That's why I'm not setting a date, but we're planning on Monday. So uh, that's why we say next week, uh, just just pay, just uh, that's why we put that, that, uh, that form out so people can sign up. And then when obviously we know that, okay, it's going to be today, it's going to be tomorrow. Like those people that tested or, I mean, not tested, they signed up, they're already anticipating it. So that's like, that was our best idea to launch it, the test net. Um, but again, that's next week. And then we're only releasing that because we feel it's ready to go. So uh, absolutely 100% feasible that mainnet is fully released um, within uh, quarter one. And you know, like the, the playbook's wide open, right? When you start talking about multi-currency support and different methods for acquiring data storage, like we talked about three already, the ability to do it with PAC, the ability to do it with YAN, and the ability to do it with um, third-party credit card services, um, whichever one it may be. Then you can go down the list of, well, what about multi-cryptocurrency? Like I know you have, which technically we do, but it's all it's all ecosystem-based, right? The PAC ecosystem, the tokens that are on PAC. You have PAC, you have YAN, that's all ours. So what about multi-currency? Well, then you could start, see how it becomes a never-ending like update frenzy. <laughs> you can always add things at that point. You can always add different uh, providers, um, basically like, we're not an exchange, but you can start listing as an exchange, basically like, hardware wallets and which currencies are supported and which ones aren't, which by the way, that is still something to be uh, presented to you guys, the hardware ledger. Um, it is, it's, it's not being pushed off. It's just, this is more important. And obviously that this needs to be done for that to be on the right network anyway. So, um, but uh, getting back to my point, you can start listing all these different, you know, cryptocurrencies to provide broader users or be, bring a more broad user base to your, uh, to your platform. Because you're not just keeping it only pack, only yam, and then only debit card. Because what if someone wants to use Bitcoin or someone wants to use Tether? So see how it becomes a you know domino effect, which is good. It's a good problem to have. Um, that's why we enjoy and uh, appreciate all your guys' support that you guys give us. Because the ideas are always there, and it's just you know how many updates can you do? You don't want to do one every single month, but if you take too long to push too many things in maybe people get a little antsy and like, Hey, when's the update coming? So we, we get it. Promise you we get it. Um, I, I do not think ill will towards anyone that says, you know, Oh, stone test that stone bit. Like I understand it. I've been there before. I'm in there right now. I'm in the position. I'm, I'm the one pushing the product. So um, it's sometimes just takes time. And that's why when we get to our releases, we are super happy to present them because we put a lot of heart and joy in, into this. Okay, that was a lot of info, and we are at the 30 minute. So, if you guys have any questions, and specifically, please, about this, um, the testnet, and um, our update, uh, I know AMA or whatever, but I would like to, to keep it on topic um, just for this, just for today, so that, because uh, it's a big, it's a big moment for us. I want to answer any of your questions that you guys have other than this, on this. Drew, having other crypto, how will that help PAC protocol? Um, you know, based off of your own opinion, I guess. I mean, from our point of view as a, you know, as a company, we feel if we allow other, you know, cryptocurrencies to be used on one of our products, you grow the amount of users that are attracted to that product. And how that, how does that benefit PAC protocol? Well, I guess, I guess the example I can give, and I mean, you may not agree with me, but the example I can give is Binance and Binance is, you know, their, their situation where they're, they're, they have their own cryptocurrency. They own that, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't just throw that out there and hope people like came there for no product, you know? So 
that's kind of my example I would give is you bring people to a product and you don't force them to use your, like you, you just bring them. Like you want to use pack, you can use pack. You, you want to learn about pack, then learn about pack. But if you want to use our product, well, if more and more people do, I think a lot of people are going to realize that, for instance, the pack app, if you're downloading the pack app and it's a multi-currency wallet, I think people will realize the name pack. Like you're going to see our brand, our imaging, our everything, like it's our product. So that would be the same thing for like Yan Safe or Yan DNA. Like they're going to want to know who made the product if they like it. And, you know, allowing other cryptos to be used to participate. I think it just gives more people the chance to learn about PAC and, you know, or notice it at least at the very least, um, just beneficial from my point of view. Um, but then other than that, it also gives people the opportunity to just use a product that's not just, you know, singling out one crypto blockchain will there be options like exchange pack for other currencies um you mean like an internal like exchange or decentralized exchange uh we've talked about it it's not something in the current plans just because we need to we need to get this out first and then just take a breath and be happy with where it's at and then yeah like i do want to um i want to come up with some system that's you know it makes sense, but it's also unique. I don't want to just copy something, um, meaning like all the different tokens that may eventually or inevitably be uh, listed on PAC Protocol's network. I want them to be able to be exchanged directly on the network without needing, you know, uh, intermediary or a middleman, you know. So that would be really cool. Um, but that would just be for the token layer and PAC, um, something that we would figure out and probably implement into our products. Um, but as far as like interacting with different cryptocurrencies and trading from, you know, Bitcoin to pack within your wallet, the only way that we could do that, it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be us doing it because we'd be putting it in the product, but it would be working with a third party. You know, we can't, we're not a facilitator. We're not a, we're not a, um, you know, money transaction. Um, you know, we're not licensed for that. It's not what we do anyway. So it wouldn't be something that we build and like manage. We would have to use a third party provider, plug in their API like in for instance the pack app where you could click buy crypto and it you know maybe it has you link your um coinbase account or it has you link your any i don't know just saying ideas and re in reality that's what you're using but it would be within pack app so a lot of ideas just want to put that out there and of course the exchange or the third party um would need to uh have the crypto in question listed. And there's other ways of doing that too, not necessarily just with like major exchanges. I mean, obviously major exchanges are important for like overall cryptocurrency movement, price, whatever you wanna look at it there. Um, but there are other ways of doing it too, where uh, third party providers with like debit card where you can uh, trade the transaction for you, um, but there's then fees involved and you know, it's, it's a service. So there's different ways to do it. It's just coming around, picking the right provider, and then plugging it in. One thing to note, I will, um, I will close with this, um, important, um, just about the test net tomorrow. Um, one thing to not, not to, I, I said tomorrow, test net next week. Um, important thing to note is within this uh, test net, you'll be minting, you'll be able to mint at NFTs, you'll be able to make your own token and supply, description, data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The main thing I want to mention on that part right there is on launch on mainnet, the ability to create your own token supply, that's not going to be live for everyone. Like that's not going to be a feature that is live and that's on purpose. It's on purpose because we specifically want Yan token to circulate first to the master and owners, blah, 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 make, you know, have that work. And then we will introduce, you know, the ability for anyone to create their own project on PAC protocols network, uh, make their own supply and uh, make their own token. Like ours is, it's called YAN, and then they'll be able to do the same. Um, that's a choice decision uh, for us. So that's just an important thing to note in the test net, you will be able to do that thing. You will be able to do what I just said, won't be on mainnet because we're not turn, it's not gonna be turned off. It's not gonna be restricted. So um, that's, it, it's important to note so that when mainnet goes live, the only other token that's going to be uh, facilitated over the network is YAN. Um, yen and pack and then it won't be a long long you know walk down a hallway it'll be something that happens pretty soon we will make it to 
where people wish to impact protocol, make their own, et cetera. Um, another thing that you could, I guess, technically do is make multiple copies of an NFT. Um, you know, same, same, um, you know, content, but different, um, NFT. So, or I'm sorry, same content, multiple supply, but important to understand. And keep in note also, um, what I just mentioned, we do have documentation being prepared, like I mentioned earlier. So um, if you don't understand what I'm saying directly here, that's okay. Um, it's all right. Uh, we'll have another one of these streams next week as, as well, and on as well, most likely will. Um, but again, we'll have that documentation released so you guys can read it, reread it, read it the third time, and then circle things and send it to us and ask, what does this mean? You know. So um, again, I appreciate you guys being here. I'm excited. Uh, this weekend is going to be really fun for us to put our finishing touches on this product, um, product and network. And hopefully you guys uh, sign up, participate in our test net, enjoy it. Um, give, uh, I give a huge shout out to our developers that have been putting in so much time and effort in this very style. I know he's super quiet as far as community, like talking in our community forums and talks and stuff like that. But he's not required to be, you know, he's part of our team here and he is a legend. Uh, we, I call him Boz the legend. So I huge shout out to him, huge shout out to Yan. Um, obviously, uh, we all appreciate and love Yan and the UI work that you see, it's custom, his job. You know, that's, 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 that's his, uh, uh, image based off of our visions that we've, you know, come up with and discussed and a lot of things he's taken that on him and made it even better. So I appreciate everyone that's involved. Um, we have more developers as well. I won't mention them by name, just by their own, um, by their own, I guess, request. They like to keep it that way, which is fine. Um, not required. But again, huge shout out to everyone that's involved in uh, making these products and our vision come to life. Um, I couldn't ask for a better team. And thank you guys for being a part of it. It's been a journey and it's just going to keep getting, keep getting better. So um, stay tuned. Sign up for the testnet again. And uh, we'll be back for uh, next week with another stream.